Hello, everybody, and welcome to this introduction to nuclear engineering. Um, so here in this class, we will be talking about a variety of topics, but let's start by defining nuclear engineering as the science of extracting energy from subatomic and nuclear scale interactions. So these are things that are happening inside of the nucleus of atoms. Um, and to just kick it off, uh, the in the standard model of particle physics, um, which if you haven't heard of before, you can go ahead and look that up. There's a ton of really great Wikipedia articles on it, for instance. Um, but in the standard model of particle physics, quarks are held together by gluons. Um, and we, won't, we won't be getting too deep into this, but in nuclear energy, in nuclear engineering, we'll just say that we care about only leptons and baryons. Um, so let's define those. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, so we care about leptons underline that, make sure that it's important. So examples of leptons include electrons, positrons, uh, and neutrinos. Um, so these are characterized as being low but non-zero mass, right? So electrons, positrons, uh, and neutrinos all have very tiny but still non-zero masses. Um, and then on the other hand, uh, we have uh, baryons that we care about. Uh, also important. So um, and this I'll say is a subtype of hadron, which if you've heard of the Large Hadron Collider, this is, these are examples of that. Well, the, not the large ones. Teehee. Um, so examples include neutrons, which uh, nuclear engineers are largely concerned with, and protons. Okay? Um, and these uh, unlike uh, the leptons, have, have relatively heavy mass. Uh, about the difference between a proton and uh, an electron is around a uh, uh, thousand in terms of with uh, with respect to their mass. So protons are about a thousand times heavier uh, than their mass uh, than uh, than electrons. Sorry. So let's go ahead and. Uh, make a little table for all of these that we might care about. So uh, I think, uh, think this will be good. Oops. Let's kill this. Oops. Nope. Get rid of that there. Who needs it? So um, let's go ahead and have columns that are rest mass. Um, uh, charge which will denote an E probably uh, make this a little larger and uh, their symbol that we'll use to denote them so like a chemical symbol um, so first up we'll have our electron um, which has a rest mass of 9.1 e to the negative 31. Oh, and I'm a bad scientist, and I didn't put my units on rest mass. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Wow. So that's in kilograms. Um, and then the charge for an electron is, we'll say, plus or minus 1. So uh, why plus or minus? You might think of an electron as having negative 1 charge. But 
uh, a positron is a is just an electron. It, from a nuclear standpoint, it's an electron. So there's two types of electrons, which we'll get to in a moment: uh, positrons and negatrons, uh, or what we think of as normal electrons. Um, and these we denote with the symbol E. Okay. Then there are protons. No reason to capitalize that. Um, so protons have a mass of 1.67 uh, 2 e to the negative 27 kilograms. So not really heavy, but still much heavier. And protons have a charge of plus 1. We denote them with the symbol P. Okay. Neutrons, um, again, are have a mass, uh, a rest mass energy, or a rest mass of 1.674 uh, e to the negative uh, 27. So they weigh just a little more than their proton counterparts um, and have a zero charge. They're neutral. They're, they're electrically neutral. Um, and these we denote with the symbol N. Um, and then uh, we have a couple more that we're interested in. So uh, let's talk about photons or light. So photons oops, um, has zero mass, zero charge, and we denote it with the symbol gamma. So I'm going to... Uh, just write that here. Um, so, oops, still getting used to this software. Uh, well, that was not super useful. Maybe I have to write it on the side. Yep. So there's a gamma. Come on, little gamma. Lowercase gamma, we'll stick it in the table here. All right. Um, and then the neutrino, uh, the plucky little neutrino, um, has oops, um, well, I'm not doing well in spelling it today. So the neutrino has very close to zero mass, still positive though, so it's greater than zero. Um, uh, but not by a lot. Um, zero charge, it's also neutral. And we denote the neutrino with the Greek letter uh, nu. So nu kind of looks like a stylized V, but is actually related to the letter N in English. Okay, um, so uh, that's basically what the rest masses are for the kinds of particles that we'll be talking about in uh, nuclear engineering. Now, um, a lot of what nuclear engineering is focused around is uh, the neutron, but you know we'll we'll because of um, because of the way the nucleus was formed, we do care about things like protons uh, and electrons and photons and neutrinos as well. And we'll get onto all of that uh, this semester. So um, it's important to note that all of these things have their own specialization, or all of these uh, these subatomic particles. And so we can start. We actually already just referred to um, the electrons, um, which can be broken up into um, electron um, or sometimes known as a negatron in this context, um, uh, which have a negative 1e e charge. Um, as well as a uh, positron, which has a positive 1e e charge, as you might expect. Um, so, uh, 
Um, and together, these two things form uh, an antimatter. Oops. An antimatter pair. Okay. Uh, so what that means is that um, if an electron and a positron uh, meet each other, right? They're attracted to each other electrically, and so if, and if they meet each other, um, they annihilate each other. Um, so the electron is matter, the positron is antimatter, and uh, when they meet, uh, they are annihilated um, and become uh, just release energy. Okay. Um, up next, uh, we see something similar for neutrinos. So there are both um, neutrinos, um, which are associated with um, positive electrons for reasons that we'll see uh, later in the course, and uh, antineutrinos, which are, as you can guess, associated with negative electrons or electrons. Um, and so these form their own antimatter pair. Um, uh, unsurprisingly. So again, these also will, would annihilate if they, uh, if they happen to meet. Um, slightly differently than uh, these two cases, we have photons. Um, and photons are all just light, um, but they come in a variety of different categorizations. Um, and these categories are really put there to help us humans uh, think about them. And they're denoted by, or they're delineated by their energy um, and sort of, and where they come from, where the light was generated from. So um, on one scale, you have gamma rays, uh, which come uh, from the nucleus of atoms. Uh, so, uh, as we'll see later on in this course, the nucleus of an atom uh, will sometimes release a photon under certain situations, and in, that, in those cases, this is called a gamma ray. Uh, alternatively, oops, uh, you've almost certainly heard of x-rays, didn't, uh, didn't go a lot better. Um, so X-rays um, are distinct from gamma, ray gamma rays in that these are born uh, from the electron shell of an atom. So, uh, and come from interactions there. So while gamma rays uh, are a little higher energy typically than X-rays, uh, they also come from different places. Uh, inside of the inside of the atom, the inside of the atom, and so on. Okay. So let's move right along here. So uh, as you probably recall from chemistry, atoms are modeled as electron potentials orbiting uh, a dust, uh, orbiting the central nucleus, and so that electron potential. Uh, is made up of a discrete number of electrons. So you have this cloud. Uh, I'm going to try to draw it here really quick. So you might have a nucleus. Um, maybe I can. Right in the center. I'm obviously uh, uh, making the size uh, way too large here. Let's make the nucleus red. How about that? No need to be tied down with these blue colors, right? Okay, so uh, we might have a small central nu nucleus, and then 
we have some electron potential cloud um, that that orbits quote unquote oops, um, um, the uh, the central nucleus. So let's maybe make this. Um, right, so just trying to reconstruct a little diagram that you've probably all seen many times represents the atom, right? Um, my hoagie PowerPoint uh, uh, examination. So um, in here, right in there, that's where we have uh, the neutrons and the protons right in the center um, uh, inside the nucleus. And then this area, the red area, is where the electron shell is. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, from the basis of chemistry, the chemical element is determined by the number of uh, protons in the nucleus, which we call Z, um, uppercase Z. Oops. So the, the right so this gives you the total charge of the nucleus um, uh, so total charge of the nucleus equals plus Z E, right? Um, and then the number of neutrons in the nucleus um, is denoted by N. So we have N, it's big N equals uh, number of neutrons. Um, all right. So while the chemical element is uniquely determined by Z, as you may have heard, for a given Z, if you've, you can have different number of neutrons in the nucleus. And so those are what are called isotopes of that element. Um, and so the summation of these two is the total number of nuclei, nucleons. So the total of nucleons is highlight that in bold because that's an important word n plus z and we give this the letter a so that's um, very close to what the atom it's a good substitute for what the atomic mass is of a particular nuclide uh, or of a particular isotope. So, uh, so I'll say in general, A is approximately the atomic mass um, in atomic mass units or AMU. It's not always, uh, but uh, that is uh, one possibility. Okay, so um, let's uh, kill that there and continue on by saying that um, we represent a nuclide so a nuclide is any particular atom uh, or any particular nucleus of an atom that has um, any uh, uh, that has you know n 
uh, neutrons in it and Z protons. Um, so we represent a nuclide with the symbol, with the chemical symbol, uh, chemical placeholder symbol, capital X. Okay. And so uh, if we have X, then some examples here are um, if you have X uh, there, you're right. Z. Uh, special. Uh, let me. S sit. Nope. Um, hey, this is annoying. I want a subscript. But. Uh, B and P. All right. So, um, Z is on the bottom, and then oops, and then uh, A is on A is on the top. It's not uh, working exactly. I wanted, but get the idea. So. Or because the uh, A, since you know the, the Z number, uh, based on the chemical element, the Z value right there is a little redundant. So you don't need to put it. And you can just typically write AX with the superscript X on the, uh, uh, on the one side. Or <laughs> if uh, you don't want to deal with superscripts like I just had to, can also write x dash the a number. Um, uh, so, for example, um, just a bit of notation. So we would have one. Oops. H one is rep hydrogen one. Um, uh, and then oops, uh, four two he is helium two or helium four. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and one that we'll be talking a lot about uh, here in this class is uranium-235. OK, so this is just how you write these new clods. Uh, not really a big deal. You guys, uh, I'm sure, are on top of this. OK. So. Um, so let's go ahead and move on with some important terminology. Um, so now a lot of this stuff is um, is easy to get wrong, and people, especially uh, uh, you know members of the public, sometimes get it wrong. And so it's important in this class uh, to be very uh, and when you're writing about nuclear topics, to be very clear and specific about what's going on. So let's go ahead and say that um, an element uh, refers uh, directly to a chemical. So we won't use the word element in any other context other than as a chemical element. Um, similarly, a nuclide uh, is uh, any atom or its nucleus. Um, 
so it specifically refers to the nuclear properties when you're talking about an atom as being a nucleus, uh, as a particular nuclide, and not an ensemble of, uh, of uh, nuclides. Um, okay? Um, here's one that is often misused is isotopes. Um, are atoms that share the same number of protons. And thus have the same z number. So what that means is that isotopes can have differing numbers of nu neutrons in their nuclei. Um, and they're not the same nuclide, right? They, they only share the same number of protons. They don't necessarily sh share the same number of neutrons or anything else. Um, similarly, uh, we have a word called isotones. So isotones are nuclides um, that, instead of sh sharing the same number of protons, uh, share the same number of neutrons. Or they have the same n number. Okay? Um, likewise, uh, isobars uh, are nuclides. that share the same total number of nucleons. Right, so they have the same A number, but not necessarily the same, uh, same number of ne neutrons or Z numbers. Um, and then Finally, and perhaps most uh, tricky, uh, is the word isomer. So an isomers <laughs> uh, are nuclides that share the same A and Z and N numbers. Same. A, Z, and N numbers, but whose nuclei, I think I'm misspelling that. Um, uh, their nuclei have different internal energy states. Um, internal. Right, so the nucleus of, uh, of an atom uh, can be either at a ground state or at some higher excited energy state, similar to how um, how in, uh, in an atom, the electrons in the orbital, uh, in the electrons orbiting the atom can be either in their ground state or at some excited state. And so to refer to differences in that you, or similarities, you, um, you have isomers. Um, and so it's very important that um, many people confuse the concept of an isotope with the concept of a nuclide. So please don't do that. Um, definitely a pet peeve. And so isotopes are really when you're only talking about the same chemical element. Nuclides are when you're talking about just any, the nuclear properties of any atom. Okay, easy peasy. So, um, uh, moving right along, let's start to talk about some, uh, some properties of, of nuclides. So, first up is one, is the concept of natural abundance. 
Okay. Um, so natural abundance represents the fraction of an L of a chemical element that naturally occurs. So it's breakdown by isotope in the Earth's crust, right? So you might have this many carbon-12 atoms and this many carbon-14 atoms um, that occur naturally, uh, um, and that changes. So when you talk about mixtures of carbon, you're typically talking about a particular mixture of different isotopes of carbon. Um, and so uh, natural abundances, oops, uh, are often oops I didn't like that um, <laughs> are typically given in units of atom percent which will uh, denote with the symbol a slash zero uh, it's supposed to look like a percent sign with an a on the top um, uh, and yeah, so let's, for example, oops, um, let's draw out a little table. So isotope, uh, and the atom percent. So the atom percent is, um, it's the fraction of each multiplied by 100, the natural fraction of each. So uh, let's do uranium. So uranium-234 exists naturally at an atom percent of uh, 0 0.0054, which is not very much. U-235 exists at an atom percent of 0 uh, 0.7 two zero four percent which also isn't very much and then the other major species is u-238 that exists naturally at ninety nine point two seven uh... four two percent atom percent okay uh... pretty good so every chemical element that is naturally occurring will have some breakdown by isotope um, uh, and uh, this is these natural abundances are pretty much one of the only places where iso it may really make sense to talk about isotopes, okay? Uh, rather than other, rather than just generic nuclides. So most of the uranium in the world is U two thirty eight, but U two thirty five is very important as well. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, also, up are another important quantity with relationship to nu nuclides are the atomic masses. Uh, so, how much a nuclide weighs? So, this is the mass of an atom, uh, and it's also often given in atomic mass units or AMU, um, which we mentioned earlier, um, which are keyed to a particular. Um, so this unit uh, uh, is relative to. Is, or it's defined as one twelfth the mass of carbon twelve. Um, so one. Oops. So so one <laughs> amu equals um, the mass of carbon-12 uh, in kilograms divided by 12. Okay. Um, 
Thus, our reasonable approximation uh, for the atomic mass um, of, or for any nuclide then, sorry, <laughs> um, you can say that, I'll try to do this here uh, with the pen, is that, um, oops, still learning this. Uh, uh, tool. So, 12 uh, times the mass of, uh, well, mass of carbon 12. Well, this is uh, not the greatest way to write, apparently. Um, Learning as I'm going here. Whoops. Um, sorry, wrote that one upside down. Okay, let's try that over again. <laughs> uh, the mass of any element. Um, uh, or any nuclide uh, 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 X Wow this is hard okay I'm gonna have to come up with something different for the next lecture because um, this is too difficult is the mass of I wish the software just worked okay um, so uh, <laughs> um, this so if this is the mass in kilograms uh, of carbon-12, this is the mass in kilograms of X of A, then the atomic mass in AMU, which will denote by capital M, uh, is just given by uh, this expression. Wow. I think I will go back To, uh, to just using the, the text-based version because this is hard to read. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. Okay. I'm going to do this one. Um, okay, so given um, natural abundances, uh, so I'll come back up here. So given uh, alpha, man, insert, wow, this is hard. Uh, character. Wow. Okay. Given alpha, so we'll call it um, alpha sub i natural. Abundances. Um, uh, for the ith isotope of an element, um, the naturally occurring 
atomic mass of that element is just given as um, m of the element of the chemical element in amu is equal to um, the sum uh, overall i of the ai oops um divided by 100 time oops times uh the mass of the uh isotope oops uh that we are looking at okay oops. Probably should rearrange these. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So, okay. Um, so note that both AMU and uh, the atomic um, uh, and ad both AMU and atom percent are dimensionless units, right? So there's no uh, no other units. Um, so to use, to get a concrete number of atoms back out, we have to use Avogadro's number, which as you'll recall, um, in this class we'll denote N sub A. Um, and this is just equal to 6.022, um, 045, uh, times 10, uh, to the 23rd um, and this is the number of atoms that exist per mole um, and so by definition 1 eta amu equals 1 gram atom uh, gram mole so 1 amu equals 1 gram more. All right. Okay. Uh, so if you wanted to know the mass in kilograms or in grams, you just have to take the mass of uh, the ith uh, nuclide. The mass in grams of the ith nuclide is just equal to the uh, the mass of the ith nuclide in AMU divided by N sub A Oops, sub big A. All right. Okay. So this is just a bunch of introductory material. You should have hopefully you guys have seen most of this before. Um, uh, and we'll start out uh, a little again next week with, um, uh, or next lecture with uh, a little bit more physics coming into it. So, but uh, yeah, hopefully this gives you enough of a basis so that we can talk about uh, the process in the class going forward. Okay, bye bye. If I can see to turn off. Stupid recorder.